All right, back again, Luke here. And today, as you can see in front of you, we have yet another board here from Ken6275. And this is a Capcom Legendary Wings, which was pointed out in the first video uh, when I put that up. I wasn't sure exactly what game this was, but that was the game. And uh, as you can see here, some parts of it are a little bit greener than others. So we've got a few parts over here that are quite green. This is a bit scratched up on the top there. This is the subboard for that. I believe this is the sound module. But uh, we've got some remnants of all sorts of stuff on this. And the board is, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, it's a bit warped here. So I'm not really sure what to expect with this. Um, looks like there's still a spider or so in there. Or some, yeah, there's a web or something in there. <laughs> All sorts of stuff. Here's the bottom of the board. And uh, it hasn't been used for quite some time. I mean, just, just by looking at it. <laughs> it's uh, like one of those things that you find in the basement. What is that? Is that another web? I don't know what that is. It's like bird droppings or something. <laughs> uh, these are fun. These are really fun. I mean, to go over and, you know see what's uh what's going on with them it doesn't look like there's any uh damage here to any of the pins or anything like that let's take uh, another look at the top ribbon cables on it once again they look somewhat decent but yeah what i figured we could do here is uh check this guy out and see what's going on with this one and uh hopefully maybe get this one up and running as well you know what? Oh my gosh. Take a look at this, guys. This is something I just noticed here. This is a bit strange. I thought something was a bit weird, but if you look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is not a JAMA pinout. And I'm really glad that we didn't plug this in. Um, because if we were, I don't know what the pinouts are for this. Normally, JAMA is like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven is the key, then eight. But this one has seven on here. Yeah, I'm okay. Well, I'm glad we didn't. Uh, yeah, we didn't try this thing out. I thought this was another JAMA board, but it's not, or it appears not to be. Wow, that yeah. I was looking over here. I noticed this uh, piece here. It looked like it was uh, broken loose. Uh, I believe it's a Pico Farad. Uh, capacitor there it looked like it was broken but just looking at that whoo that might have saved us a bit of trouble here um, and actually uh, this means that I'm gonna have to try and make an adapter or try and find an adapter for this I don't know what the pinouts are so I'm gonna have to take a look at that well guys I guess we can't start the video right now um, gonna have to get on that and find a way to make a uh, yeah, make an adapter for this. Okay, so let me go see if I can find some parts. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so after doing a, a little bit of a search online, I found the pinouts for this, and they're on the computer right now, so I'm going to have to go over there and maybe print something off or whatnot. But yeah, the, pr the pinouts for this are completely different. Well, not completely, but um, it looks like we have ground here. We've got plus 5 volts. And then after that, there's like another ground here. There's a ground here, a ground here. This is uh, three grounds at the back, and this one is plus 12 volts. So everything is going to be needing to be uh, rewired as far as the pinouts go. And the controls are all totally different too. So what I found is I've got a, uh, a thumb board, and I've got a, a JAMA connector here. And we're going to make an adapter. Actually, I've got some wire here, so we're going to try and splice something together. I don't know how pretty it's going to be, but <laughs> we're going to have to see what we can do. Let's see if we can get this thing to uh, at least power on, but it's not going to power on with regular, you know, JAMA connector, especially with 12 volts. I wonder what even 12 volts running to this pin would do. I mean, maybe there's some kind of, like, safety mech in it. I don't know that prevents it from frying but yeah so I need to wire something like this up and it's gonna take some time so I'm gonna do this off-camera because um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's gonna take some time. <laughs> That's just, just the way it is. Let's make an adapter for it and see what happens after that. So we're gonna use our wire here and this will probably only take a couple of seconds uh, for the video, but it's gonna take a long time in reality. <laughs> see you in a bit. All right, dun dun dun. Let's move this out of the way here. And <laughs> here we go. As you guys can see here, um, all of the pinouts I wrote along here so I could solder these wires incorrectly, but you can see the player one up, down, left, right, ground, start. I believe D, there's a D4 here. This is a diode, maybe to protect from frying, but there's another ground here. All of these grounds, 12 volts, speaker on the side, had to do the back side as well. Uh, for player one and two, I shaved this down on this one. I accidentally put the thumb board in uh, the opposite way, which made it even twice as uh, complicated as what is it, it should have been. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's uh, it's okay now, I suppose. I don't know. I haven't tested this yet, uh, but this is the monstrosity that we're looking at. Tons of wires that have been jumped from one point to another in order to get it to work. Now, I do know that they sell adapters for old uh, Capcom boards, probably for this one as well. But uh, since I didn't have access to it, we're just going to use my makeshift one and hope that the whole house doesn't go up in smoke. <laughs> I've made these kind of adapters before for System 16 boards, so it's not the first time, but hopefully it will work. Oh, that's a tight fit. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, geez, maybe I should have cleaned off that edge connector, but well, we're going to be able to tell if we've got power or not or something. I think that's going to be our main purpose here. Uh, I just want to make sure that nothing is touching on the inside. It's really close, but luckily it's not. Yeah, it's not touching on the inside there so geez with the bow to this thing I don't know um yeah I don't know let's stop rambling let's just see what it does all right here we go let's hope for the best is everything plugged in plugged in a little bit nervous <laughs> about this board are you freaking kidding me oh my gosh what no way no freaking way. What? What? Does it have sound? Oh my gosh. You've got to be kidding me. This is nuts. What? Oh my gosh. Sorry guys, I know I must be super irritating by now, but this is just doing my head in. All right, let's see what the... Oh my gosh! The controls work? Oh, yes! Forward, down, back, button. Oh my gosh! It is freaking working. You've got to be kidding me. This is the easiest fix I think I've ever had. I mean, aside from the fact that the... Uh, the controls are backwards and I can't fly straight. Um, it's got sound, it's got graphics. Can you believe this? It's playing perfectly. Did I speak too soon? Oh no. No, it's still working fine. This is freaking nuts. Trying to look at the uh, super gun here. Obviously, can't play very well with this. But it is alive. Jeez, I cannot believe this. Just freaking insane. I'm gonna wind up dying here. This is the boss, isn't it? We got bombs. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Am I missing something? Oh, there I am. I was off on the side. Oh, dude. 
This is too cool. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. Well, I really don't know what to say, guys. I was not expecting this at all, whatsoever. But uh, yeah, this is uh, working absolutely fine. I think what we might have to do is just find a way to clean up the board a little bit more um, on some of these parts and then fix that bowing in the center, but it is working absolutely beautifully. That is insane. Well guys, I don't know if I can really call this a repair video, but um, I guess I'll upload it anyway because it's pretty impressive for me and um, I'm pretty shocked with the results. The fact that it just fired up right uh, one shot there, especially with like some of this grunge looking on the side and that big bow in the middle, but yeah, um, I'm going to try to fix this bow, maybe find something to go in between there. I need to try and measure this out, maybe I can fit like a spacer in there. I don't want to flex this board too much, but definitely want to keep that top board and bottom board off uh, each other. So I guess I'm going to strip the top part down, maybe clean it up a little bit, and then we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So as you can see here, I've removed all the screws. I haven't lifted this top part off yet, but you guys should be able to see what's going on underneath it. <sighs> There we go. Dusty, but uh, as, if we, as we've all seen, uh, trusty. Just a lot of uh, remnants of animals and whatnot. Nice fuzzball there. We've got other fuzzy stuff on the board here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing outside as before with the, uh, the other board with the um, da 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 da. Yeah, the other repair video that I did. Not to spoil anything if you guys haven't seen that one. But I'm going to clean this one up here on both sides just using my wire brush. This one's going to be a little bit more tricky. It's got some, that is definitely like some bird, bird goo <laughs> on that. There's no doubt about that. That's just really nasty. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to take these outside and just kind of brush them off a bit. The ROMs and everything look pretty good. And surprisingly, this bottom board looks much better than the top one. So once we get these polished up, I'll put it back together again. And like I said, I'm gonna try and find something to go in the middle here to keep these things a bit more stable. But I'll get on that and be back in a bit. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I've kind of dusted this off a little bit. Probably needs a bit more uh, fine dusting here, but the top board looks decent. The bottom port part here, much better. A couple of the chips on the top here which are a bit green, um, which I'd like to take care of, and just put on a little bit of it, let it sit for a while, and then I will go back over it with some uh, Ox, uh, some uh, rubbing alcohol. This is a pretty strong stuff here. And I don't want to put too much of it on, but hopefully it'll be enough to kind of do the job. Make sure I don't... See, there we go. Should help eat away at the um, rust and garbage that's on there. Oxidization. Might take a little while for it to start up here, but like I said, just to get rid of some of this. Rust on these chips here. Once it activates, it usually doesn't take too long. And there are many different kinds of rust removers you can use. We just kind of leave it on there for a couple minutes and it should be okay. I don't know if you guys can even see this right now. Probably the angle wasn't the best. See, as you can see there, those are the two main chips here that I'm focusing on. And just using some 
rust remover. <laughs> it's hard to get in there and show you guys, but... Stuff is not very friendly smelling, that's for sure. But it's amazing, you know, that uh, just being able to change that um, or make that adapter there was enough to get this board to work. It's uh, unbelievable. Usually never have those super simple fixes. I know I've had a few where like trace repairs and whatnot, but nothing like this. That was very amazing, especially since we've got a couple of like RAM chips over here, some of the old Fujitsu RAMs, and um, we've got RAM chips all over the board, not to mention the Boeing and like the, you know, I mean, look at the subboard. It looks like it's been through a wood chipper, um, but still none of that seemed to affect the performance of the board. It's still working. So as you can see, the legs on these chips now are a bit nicer. You can see that all of that green is now gone here. So I'm just going to go over it with this and that'll make things a lot easier in the future. Hopefully this will never spread and these two chips will be okay. Like, if the chip looks like it's salvageable, I'll usually use this on it, but um, if it doesn't, you know, if it looks like it's in really rough shape, I'll wind up replacing it. So, these two looked pretty good, and since we know the board is already working, there's no need to remove those ones. But yeah, I'm going to let that sit for a little bit longer. I'll try and polish this up a bit more, and then we'll work on the big bow in the middle. So thinking about what to do about this bow in the middle, I came across this rubber box. I don't even know what it was used for. I don't even know why I had it. But uh, I decided to fill it with some hot glue, actually quite a bit of hot glue. And now it's a, a bit of a solid, thick box here. And what I'm thinking is I'll just put this, I've got the post here. This is the original size for the post. So I'm going to take the post, maybe cut it down just a little bit more uh, on this box and then plop this in the center like so and then hopefully that'll get rid of the bow that's in the middle but that's the idea that's the plan at least right now so I'm gonna try and mark this up and maybe cut it with an exacto knife and see if we can get it to fit in the center and then that way it should make everything flat again so we'll try that so what I should have mentioned here is what I did with this is uh, I just kind of filled this with some paper as you can see it's shredded paper just to kind of make it a bit thicker and then I glued the top on there but um, yeah, I, I thought it was going to go down a little bit further so I'm going to have to make a new flat top for this but it's not completely filled with glue but the glue is kind of keeping everything in place so I'm going to get my glue gun here and we'll try and put a cover back on this <laughs> again <laughs> so I can show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so as you can see here, this is my little confetti box, I suppose, if you want to call it that. And I should have uh, done this in the first place, but when I capped it off, I forgot to measure it. I thought it was about the right height, but as you can see here, this is actually a little bit taller, so it won't push this up totally. I mean, probably super flat, but maybe it'll come close enough. I mean, around the sides here. It's not exact, but I'm kind of hoping this will sit at least somewhat flush. I've got my heat gun or not my heat gun my uh, hot glue gun here and I'm just gonna go over the top of it and the reason why I filled it with uh, paper is just because I didn't want to use a whole yeah ream of uh, hot glue on this it would just be a waste so just going around the ends here and having this as a uh, insulation on the inside should well make it a little bit better anytime you try and do stuff on camera it always comes up as a disaster doesn't it <laughs> So, just trying to feed some of this hot glue that's not so hot. It's kind of solidifying a bit faster than what I'd like it. Plus, the new glue stick going in there is not going to be hot enough. But luckily, with hot glue, you can let it remelt and you can kind of reshape it here. But, you know, everybody's got their own idea of, you know, how to do this kind of thing. Maybe just by sticking a piece of foam on the inside, yeah, that would work. But the foam I've noticed over time, especially like the anti-static foam, is it will deteriorate and it'll fall apart. Something like this, I think it'll be a bit more solid. 
in the end. Does it look great? No, it doesn't. But it should keep its form, and that's what I'm most concerned about here. So whatever way you can find, especially if you have boards that have no support in the center, like no center support uh, post or anything like that, definitely recommend putting something in there, uh, you know, mostly as soon as possible, I suppose, because if not, eventually you will get the bow problem here that I'm having with this board. And that's going to cause you a lot of trouble especially if the pins on the outside accidentally touch the inside then you're gonna get shorts and all sorts of things and with some of these boards that have these custom chips on it it's not gonna be fun trying to relocate uh, or you know find new ones replacement ones so let's take this off these are just some crazy ideas you know just kinda looking through the parts bin and oh I've got this so let's use that Sometimes it just doesn't make any sense. It's a bit like MacGyver-ish here, I suppose, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Came a little bit harder there, so I can peel that off. And for the most part, that should be pretty good. Like I said, all I want to do is just kind of create uh, a block that I can put in the center, which will help to secure... Well, it looks like I had a couple of holes in the bottom of that, too. Which will help to secure the top board and the bottom board a bit better. Alright. So far so good. I guess we'll just let that sit for a couple minutes. It's a bit cold outside so with the air temperature here it should get cool somewhat rapidly. But as you can see here it's not yet. <laughs> that was a bit too early. Let's see if we can flatten that out now. Like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, only using hot glue. <laughs> but if that sticks together, that'll be perfect. So that's our next thing that we got going on here. It's going to be our little support. Once that hardens, I'm going to put that in the middle and we'll strap it all together and see how it works. And it couldn't be that easy now, could it? <laughs> well, I was thinking that this thing was fixed, but as you were aware of, or as many of you are aware of, uh, in the comments section, there were quite a few people saying, hey, look, that thing is not fixed. Some comments were a little bit uh, stronger than that, but uh, I do understand that this wasn't a repair video, so we're gonna have to do the right thing and get this thing repaired. Now, as you can see here, I'll show you what it's doing. We'll turn it on. I had no idea it was doing this. I literally thought everything was working perfectly fine. But uh, once this thing starts up here, you guys can see that uh, the characters are all blue, blue and yellow. So there is a, a definite problem here. And even the characters, like maybe the structure or the look of the characters here might be a little bit off. I really didn't even notice that until somebody said, hey Luke, look, you know, the, the water's a little bit different or the characters are a little bit different. So. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get on this and take a look at it and see what's going on with it I've already started uh, probing around on this thing to try and see if I can find out where the issues might be I've uh, started by reseeding and uh, removing the RAM chips here that way it'll be a little bit easier to figure out what's going on you guys may be asking about some of these chips like how do you know what to do or you know where are you getting your information from and the honest truth is that some of these boards especially like this Capcom board and some of the other ones like the Taito boards uh, they don't have any schematics so you have absolutely nothing to work with uh, on some of these not like some of the older boards that you can just kind of like pull out like an Arkanoid board um, the original Arkanoid or or even pulling out some of the um, boards like, uh, what is it, um, Super Punch-Out. You can find lots of schematics online about those boards, but this one, uh, yeah, you can't find anything. What makes it ten times worse, too, is Konami decided to do their little secretive thing uh, to hide all the traces, so you can't see any traces on this board. You can see a lot of vias, but you can't see any traces. It's the same on the other side, so you really have no idea what the uh, point is connected to. You're kind of going off of different schematics that you can find online and um, 
you know, trying to piece things together. There are some schematics, for example, for a uh, Ghost and Goblins, but the Ghost and Goblins board is completely different than this. So, I mean, you can use some points to it to try and maybe figure out what's attached to some of these, uh, you know, regular mask ROMs and whatnot. But other than that, it's uh, it's a bit difficult. So. Uh, other things people have asked about is like, how do you know which components are bad or which ones are good? Well, there are a lot of components on these boards that are known as kind of like the troubled components. Many people have already talked about. Uh, I've mentioned before the Fujitsu uh, chips. They tend to have a tendency to go bad. Uh, the TTLs, but the RAM's pretty good. Over here, you can see all of our mask ROMs. These are going to be where the graphics are. On this board, the graphics are on the bottom and the CPU and all of the, uh, the computing is done on the top. So... Those are another way, too, to figure out which board maybe you could start probing or looking at. I've already started to try and figure out what um, could be the issue. I, I'm not exactly sure, but I've gone over these mask ROMs, and I've actually verified them using the main ones, and they come out as fine, but I just don't know. I'm, I'm not sure at all. If we take a look here, like, let's say, let's, uh, let's remove, I think, 14... Oh no, he's using the screwdriver! Ah! <laughs> 14 and 15. These ones pop out quite easily. I'm just removing a couple of these. I'm trying to figure out exactly which ones are uh, connected to what. But you can see that's kind of messing with our background here. Some of our background graphics. Which, I think the background graphics were fine, it's just our main character sprites. Yeah, you can see it's affected the background there, so we're not going to be messing with those two. Those ones seem all right, but these mask ROMs too do have a tendency to have some issues where they'll just like suddenly uh, flake out and stop working, or maybe they'll work well. You'll be able to read them in the uh, the programmer, but they just don't work in reality. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. It's just uh, kind of uh, one of those things where you have to just kind of keep going like this is just you know just for fun here guys don't take this too seriously but just to see where m some of these uh, mask ROMs are connected to like there you can see that is connected to our character sprites and especially connected to the ones that we're looking for so I mean that gives us a little bit of an idea here 16 I mean, possibly 16, we can go over that again and see if all of the pins are connected. But we can also try and figure out where 16 is connected to on these TTL chips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and, you know, take a look here at some of these other uh, mask ROMs and then maybe see where they're connected to on the board. See if we can figure something out and get this running because, uh, yeah, I apologize for that last video. It wasn't really a repair one. And we're going to try and rectify that now. So, anyway, I'm going to get on that, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so fast forward here a couple of months, or a few months at least, and we're still working on this board. I decided to put this thing away for a little while and then come back to it. And if you remember, we were taking a look at this uh, mask ROM, number 16, and I went through it, I checked it, I tried to reburn a new one, replaced it, checked the traces, and made sure that everything was connected, and there was no problem with this whatsoever. But I did find that the character graphics were connected to to these two Sony CXK5808 RAM chips. These are really kind of odd, uh, strange kind of shape here, but um, they're difficult to test unless you have an adapter. And I got an adapter from Caius. If you know, remember Caius, uh, he's one of the guys that I usually go to to get all of my kind of reproduction parts here. And I, I tried to remove these two when replace it with the, uh, the reproduction ones, and there was no change in it. But when I removed this one here in the bottom, I did find that there was a lot of corrosion. Now, if you guys remember, there was some corrosion on the top of the board as well. One of the pins was not making good contact. So when I removed this, I put a socket down and then I replaced it. And the graphics were a little bit better after that. They had some lines in them in bef uh, before, towards the beginning. But after putting this back down, uh, the lines disappeared and they became more defined. But uh, these two are actually connected to the character graphics or character sprites. But what I did is I went around this whole bottom board and I couldn't find anything else. There was absolutely nothing else that I could do to try and figure out what was going on with those, uh, those sprites. 
So what I did is I went back to the, uh, the front or the top of this board and a couple of things here, you guys, uh, maybe I'll help out you guys. Uh, one thing, uh, go, going over the RGB lines, I was able to figure out that uh, the RGB is actually controlled by these three, uh, what is it, 367s. So this is, I believe, the red, blue, and green. And also these resistors, too, are connected to these three. So what I did is I went over these and I tried to see if those were the problem because it was obviously having an issue with not showing red and I believe like, um, what was it, red and green? It was showing all blue. So I tried to replace these ones. It was no change at all. Um, by removing them, obviously the graphics, everything disappeared because there was no color. But um, going along here and checking and probing around, I found that this, this is a 70 for LS 373 or sorry 273 and uh, although it looks faded and whatnot by uh, checking and kind of bridging a couple of the data lines on it I was able to see that the character sprites were changing but the color wasn't changing they were just physically changing um, but taking a look at this one and running it all the way up here this 74 LS 273 is connected to the character sprites as well and I, I had no idea that this would be on the top part of the board but um, after doing the same thing on this one I actually was able to see the character sprites come back to life and so I removed this uh, one here this is at 1M I removed that put this in here and uh, yeah needless to say this thing is back up and running again so figured we'll go ahead and give this a shot turn off the lights here and let you see what's going on with it actually no I should uh, plug that in first <laughs> and uh, as you can see here this is our handy dandy adapter here from PCB Junkie fantastic one and works out really well so really glad to have this here just as long as it's connected, it should be better. <laughs> I shouldn't have to worry about it. So let's try this one more time. There we go. This is going to be kind of tricky. Let's see if I can put this on here. Let's add a couple of coins. This isn't going to be a gameplay video or anything like that. Just to show you guys that the characters are back. So as you can see here, there is our characters I've kind of got this on an angle just to show you guys but the uh, the sprites for everything are back to normal you can see that the power-up sprites and everything are working perfectly I've just got this thing kind of propped up here right now But everything looks great. So going through here, and this before was missing some sprites, if you guys remember, but you can see now all of the, uh, the enemies here are completely solid again. But yeah, just to show you guys here, it is back up and running again. So we do have our, let's see here, there's our red one as well. Our game is back up and running. So finally, we do have a repair video here worth putting up. But uh, thanks again for everyone who had mentioned that uh, there were still some missing graphics, missing uh, character sprites in this game. And uh, I'm glad we were able to finally get this thing back up and running again. So for those of you out there who may have any trouble with this board, a couple of things to check out here. These two are connected for uh, connected to the character sprites, and they may be also a problem with this board if you uh, have the same kind of problem as I had with this one. But yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching. watching some legendary wings final repair here <laughs>